Ferdinando Sosa is a political artist. Now he creates a lot of very controversial stuff, but he decided to create a left shark, um, and this was the original left shark uh, design. It, it, subsequently in dealing with lawyers, he has created lawyer left shark. So he created this design. Um, very shortly thereafter, he got a cease and desist letter from Katy Perry's attorneys on both copyright and trademark grounds that Left Shark belonged to Katy Perry and that he needed to take it down. Um, he was um, a, a law professor, took up his case, and has been in this very, very public dialogue uh, with Katy Perry's law firm about why or why not Left Shark is infringing. And Left Shark really is actually a great teaching case at the moment because it presents a lot of very interesting copyright issues. Uh, before we get into those, I want to, I do want to point out two interesting kind of practice points. Um, one of the things that be, when a case becomes public, it, you really even have to start watching your step a little bit more. So when they went to register, um, when Katy Perry's lawyers went to register the initial trademark for Left Shark, they used this picture created by <laughs> Ferdinando Sosa of the des design that Ferdinando Sosa created. Not the best move. <laughs> um, it's not something you should be doing anyways, but when you're getting a lot of press coverage for the cease and desist shoot, don't, yeah, no, terrible idea. The other really interesting thing is that they sent a cease and desist, they didn't send a DMCA takedown notice. And there was a lot of talk, uh, especially in the initial days, of whether this was because they weren't 100% willing to swear under penalty of perjury that they were actually infringing Katy Perry's rights. Now, there are some folks who say, you know, a, a lawyer shouldn't be sending out a DMCA take, or sorry, sorry, shouldn't be sending out a cease and desist letter that they can't stand behind. But, you know, that's been an element that's become very public and very predominant. So it's another example of when you're sending cease and desist notices on these very public issues, being prepared for everything you write to show up on the internet, um, and being prepared to deal with the entire kind of copyright community geeking out over it on Twitter and over, all over legal, uh, the legal blogosphere. So one of the most interesting issues is the ownership issue. Does Katy Perry own Left Shark? So what do you guys think? Does Katy Perry own the Left Shark? And what's really at issue is the Left Shark costume. I mean, did she create the costume? Did she draw it? Did she, yeah. you know, sew it? Did she, you know, there's, there's too many facts that are missing. Yes. Was so, there a TM on the costume? <laughs> there was not a TM on the costume that I'm aware of. Um, <laughs> nor was it registered until after, or nor was the first attempt to register it made till after that first season desist was sent. Um, some of the facts that have come out um, from uh, Katy Perry's perspective is that um, she, not the NFL, owns the rights to it. The costume was um, because she got the NFL to sign over the rights to the costume. This has not been otherwise verified. After or before? before, that she owned the rights to everything related to her Super Bowl, her performance at the Super Bowl, not necessarily the other creators. Now, is it possible that that happened and that was in a contract? Entirely possible. Had she gotten the rights from the original maker of the costume? costume. Now, that's unclear. Um, the only thing that Katy Perry's attorneys have verified at this point is that drawings were made before the costume was made, which is something that we kind of come to expect from most costumes. They have tried to rely and say that the costume, one of the arguments that's been made is that the costume is actually a derivative work of that original drawing. So even if the costume isn't copyrightable, because the drawing is copyrightable, they get copyright over the costume. Separability is a little bit more interesting. Um, traditionally, and we've touched on this a little bit, costumes most of the time do not receive copyright protection because they're useful objects, much in the same way that fashion is, but if there are certain copyrightable elements that you can separate out, then that could be subject to copyright protection. Now, the best argument I've heard so far in favor of a separability argument is referencing a teddy bear case that I think was in the Tenth Circuit, where the court found that a teddy bear was a sculptural, uh, was a sculpture, and therefore the teddy bear was subject to copyright protection. Um, 
Though that really, that argument doesn't really get to the separability argument, so I'm not crazy about that comparison. So, I think she would, you know, if anybody owns it, she would own it. Yeah. But I don't think she necessarily owns that. Yeah, and traditionally, Lots. costumes have not been included right. um, in that, unless it's a, um, and I'm forgetting the term, but unless it's a really well-developed character, mm -hmm. which... Left Shark right. is definitely not a well-developed no. character. With it looks like Land Shark from SNL. It does. It's very simple. Yeah, and there's there's, there's oh. also the whole uh, um, character issues of you know is, is when does a character acquire copyright protection mm -hmm. or, or even more so trademark protection. Yeah, and that's what's really interesting in this case is, you know, Left Shark going into the performance, no real character. The character really only developed when an when a dancer forgot what to do on stage. Uh, and then the internet created Left Shark. So when you have an internet meme that's really created off of a live event and a character is developed around that, who owns the rights to the character that's developed by this crowd? And it was publicly performed, it's not like yeah. private screenings. Absolutely, in one of the most public performances possible. Um, <laughs> So that's really, so that's, so the ownership issue is incredibly interesting. All the facts have not been brought to light. So I don't think we can make a determination on ownership without knowing all of the facts.